Hi again, everyone. Welcome into another edition of Inside Sports. I'm Mark Keller. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We are jam-packed with local sports this time around. Herald Mail Sports Editor Andy Mason is back in studio with us this week. He'll wrap up last weekend's Washington County Wrestling Tournament for us and look ahead to this weekend's region tournaments. Kevin Dunleavy is here to discuss boys basketball as teams make their final push of the regular season. We're just a few short days away from the announcement of the region tournament seedings. And Bob Parsletti stops by to talk about unified sports. The state bocce tournament was held last week at Hagerstown Community College. As is often the case, Bob was there and as always, he has some great insight that you'll want to hear. And finally, we'll get social, take a peek at what's been happening on Facebook, Twitter and more and tell you how you can be part of the show by tagging us on our social media platforms. A whole lot happening this week, but we'll bring it all into focus for you when Andy Mason gets us started with wrestling right after this. When you elevate nurses, you reduce an entire town's blood pressure. Specialized medical training means top nurses, top care. Meritus. Healthcare. Transformed. How do you give a patient healthier health care? Give her doctor, nurse, PA, and therapist the same health record. Introducing electronic health records. One patient, one record, one click. Meritus. Healthcare. Transformed. For the last two years of my education, I was going to work full-time, school full-time, and raising two young children by myself. I think that anybody who's desiring to continue their education or to advance their career, I think that USMH provides convenient location, affordable pricing, and again, they have instructors that really care about sending their students off with the experience and the education that they need to succeed. When it comes to hearing loss, who will be taking care of you? Audiologist Dr. Karen Hamilton is Hagerstown's hearing doctor, working to improve the quality of life for those with hearing loss. At Audiology Services, Dr. Hamilton focuses on evaluation and diagnosis to provide solutions for treating hearing loss. Using the latest technology, she programs hearing aids to meet your unique needs and ensures they fit properly and comfortably. Audiology Services participates with most insurance companies and will check benefits and file claims on your behalf. Dr. Hamilton and her team also serve the community through Hagerstown Hearing, which focuses on providing crystal clear sound in places such as theaters, churches, offices, and homes. Hagerstown Hearing installs looping systems that allows those with hearing loss to enjoy speech clarity and noise reduction, providing an experience like never before. To learn more about audiology services and Hagerstown Hearing, call 301-790-3300. Audiology services and Hagerstown Hearing, providing crystal clear sound. Welcome back into Inside Sports, starting off the program today with some wrestling. Andy Mason is here, sports editor of the Herald Mail, and uh, Andy, the Washington County Tournament this past weekend, and uh, Williamsport on top again for the second straight year. Yes, yeah, second straight year and 12th time overall. This was the 29th annual Washington County Wrestling Tournament, and they've now won it 12 times, so they're the all-time leader. And they broke the tie with North, which has won it 11 times. Uh, and yeah, they were... They were dominant. They sent nine wrestlers to the finals. Uh, I say only. They only came away with three champions. I think <laughs> they had hoped for a few more, but they were they were still impressive. Uh, freshman Zach Starr got things started at 106 pounds, and their other two champs were uh, junior Brandon Oyster at 195 and senior Taquan Johnson, who re kept his season perfect at 285. Those two heavier guys both uh, both became two-time county champs. Uh, surprise, well, surprising to me anyway, I'll say, uh, the South Hagerstown finishing second. Yeah, first they, time they ever finished second. Well, they actually matched, they finished second a few times okay. before, so they matched their best ever performance at, at counties by finishing second. And they were really impressive in the finals. Uh, I think they had six guys in the finals, but they won five titles more than anyone else. And they came, they were, they came ready to wrestle. Uh, Vince Salgado at 132, Caleb Everhart at 138, Nick Kelball at 160, who became a three-time county champ as a junior and Mike Tunis at 182 and Vince Fiery at 220. Now, um, Everhart and Kelball, those, those titles were expected. The other three, I'd say, weren't. Um, Salgado at 132 facing Malachi Cunningham from Williamsport, um, a kid he'd lost to the two times they'd faced this season. He gets into that final, bam, he's up 8-2, then he's up 10-5, then he pins him. Um, Tunis at 182, he's, um, he's down 6-2 against Williamsport's uh, Bloran Rookie. Um, second period down 6-2, looks like he's might lose, uh, gets Rookie on his back, gets the pin, 
And then Vince Fiery facing Keegan Kidweiler from Boonesboro in that final at 220. Kidweiler, they'd wrestled four times this season. Kidweiler had won all four of them. In the county final, uh, Vince Fiery was ready to go, got the title, got the important one. Talk about what, what something like that, a second place finish, uh, can do for a program like South Hagerstown that hasn't typically been in that, that hierarchy uh, in the county. What can that do for this that well, program that, going yeah, forward? It's, it's, it's great for them. You know, they've really been a program on the rise these last few years. This was their second straight year. They got to the region duels. Um, they're winning a lot more matches than they're losing. They're sending nine guys to the region tournament this coming weekend. Um, yeah, it's great. For, I mean, you know, it, the, the program's starting to win. It's a sport at South that kids want to join and be a part of. Let's go a little bit further down the list. Boonesboro finishing third and North Hagerstown fourth in, uh, in the team standings. Yeah, so Boonesboro, um, they were in second for a lot of the tournament until South got on that roll in the finals. They passed Boonesboro. Boonesboro did really well in the consolation round, had a bunch of third place finishers, but they only had one, one champion, Max Christ at 170. He became a two-time county champ. Um, I will say this, I don't want to, don't, don't want to forget to mention it. Tristan Cook, who last year became Boonesboro's first ever state wrestling champion, senior this year, undefeated record. He did not wrestle. Spinal cord injuries done for the year. Very, wow. uh, very disappointing for them. Now he's expected to fully recover and maybe we'll be back on the track team this spring. He's a state champ in the discus as well. But yeah, his wrestling season's over and that's, that's really disappointing for them. Um, North, fourth place. Pretty sure that's their worst finish ever. I don't think they've ever been outside the top three, but it, it says two things. You know, they're, they have a rebuilding, they're rebuilding this year. And it also shows that, you know, the county's pretty strong in wrestling because North's still not that bad. So, you know, it's just the county overall is, is, is better than it's been some years. And despite that, still had a few individual champions. Oh, yeah. North yeah, freshman Thomas Mon at 113 looked fantastic. Uh, you know, he won by tech fall in the final. He's just, he's a great, he's, you know, he's, he's a young star. Um, Tyler Cook, Jr., uh, he got a second title, um, second county title, 126. He was state runner-up last year. And then Sam Hardman at 145, who, like Cook, won a Hub Cup title earlier this year. He got his count, first county title. And uh, then the Smithsburg got fifth. Um, they had two champs, no surprise. Shane Hovermail at 120 and Josh Atkinson at 152 for Atkinson. For Hovermail, it was the second county title. Atkinson is third straight at 152. Atkinson is still unbeaten this year. So now with the county tournament in the rearview mirror, we look ahead to this weekend. We have the region tournaments this weekend. Yeah, region tournament. Um, you know, this is this is what it's all about. Uh, you try first. You have to get there, and then you know, the top four in each weight class go to states. Uh, we have Boonesboro, Smithsburg, and Williamsport in 2A, 1A West at Winters Mill. That's Friday, Saturday, and then North and South are in 4A, 3A West in Clarksburg. Also, set for two days, Friday, Saturday, and uh, 2A, 1A West. It's just absolutely loaded it's it it's the toughest region in the state of any classification um southern garrett damascus williamsport three of the top four public school team ranked teams in the whole state they are all in 2a 1a west so those uh getting the states out of that region is very difficult you get you get the states out of 2a 1a west you're you know you're, you're a podium contender. Yeah, big numbers of qualifiers uh, for, for, the, for the teams, for local teams. Yeah, and, we have 39 yeah. kids still alive. Um, Williamsport has 11, two number one seeds, Brandon Oyster and Taquan Johnson, and Zayden Meyer, who we didn't mention earlier, he kind of got a little hurt, hurt his knee at the county tournament, but he should be, should be back. He's uh, seated second. Um, Boonesboro has sending eight. Uh, John Grimm, who's the county runner up at 160, actually got the number one seed um, in 2A 1A West. He lost the Kell Ball from Fulton 4A 3A in the county final. And Max Christ is number two at 170. Smithsburg is sending five. Shane Hovermail and Josh Atkinson are both number two seeds. Um, Atkinson, even though he's unbeaten, um, he's going in as the number two. Wow. And Hovermail is going in as the number two. But the kid who's ranked number one, he uh, he pinned last year in the state semi, so he's got to be feeling pretty good. Um, uh, South Hagerstown sending nine. Everhart, who won a county title last year, or won, won a region title last year, just won a county title last weekend. He and Kelball are both number one seeds. And uh, North is sending six. Um, Tyler Cook is number one seed. Thomas Mons is number two. And, um, yeah, Cook, Cook, won a, Cook won a region title last year. Wow. 
Okay, so region tournament is this coming weekend, state tournament the following weekend. We don't want to get out of here without mentioning St. James, a big achievement for them. Yes, they won the B division title at the Maryland Independent School State Tournament uh, this past weekend at Hartford Community College. Now, there were 30 total teams that competed. They finished 13th overall, but they were first among the B or small school. You know, their point total had them first among the, the small schools, so they left with the... Uh, the B division uh, plaque, which yeah, big accomplishment for them. Second time in program history they've done it. I believe it was two years ago they did it for the first time. And they were led by, again, TJ Culette, their uh, senior, placed third at 170 pounds and impressively finished his career as a four-time state place winner. Uh, congratulations to him. Congratulations to the Saints as well. Andy, thanks for joining us. We'll have Andy back next week uh, to wrap up the region tournament and look ahead to the state tournament. Coming up after this break, we we'll have Kevin Dunleavy here to talk some boys basketball. We've been coming to Rick's for about three or four years. The staff at Rick's is wonderful. It is the cheers of Hagerstown. Everybody knows your name. They've actually become a lot of our friends. They treat you like family. They know you by name. It's nice to be able to go somewhere as quality as this that's not a chain restaurant. The food is unique. They get fresh. creative. Yeah. It's fresh food. And they make great drinks. <laughs> the word is in. Local, casual, and always epic. That's Rick's Cafe. Primetime for Women is no ordinary show. It's the exciting live audience TV show for and about women in the prime of life. Since every woman deserves to be seen and heard, cameras capture the audience as they interact with national celebrities, local experts, and guest presenters. Join me, Bernadette Wagner, for Primetime for Women. Tune in every Thursday and Friday at 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sundays at 8 a.m. for Primetime for Women on WCL-TV channels 806 and 6. Welcome back to Inside Sports. We're going to talk some boys basketball now. Harold Mail Insider Kevin Dunleavy here with us. Kevin, we've talked a lot about North Hagerstown, talked a lot about Williamsport over the last few weeks, and uh, those two squared off last week. North Hagerstown getting the better of Williamsport 56-52 in overtime. Yeah, it was another uh, tooth and nail struggle. It was The first game was just like it as well, a real defensive mining game. Uh, in fact, North now, the two lowest scoring outputs for Williamsport this year have been against North, and uh, that shows you how good North's defense is. <clears throat> and their rebounding especially, they out-rebounded them a lot in, in both games. And looking at the stats, that's been an amazing, uh, amazing thing for North. They've had, um, they've had 300 more rebounds than their opponents this year, which works out to about four, a 14-point margin per game. That's sort of unheard of in basketball, but it shows you how much they're getting after the ball. And it's not just the talent. It's not just the size. It's a lot of that is just desire. And you <clears throat> mentioned uh, before this kind of the unofficial Washington County Championship game uh, in terms of public schools and uh, North taking that 8-0 against county teams this year. They're the first team to do that uh, since South did it in 2014-15. And this North Williamsport has really become quite a rivalry between those two teams. Yeah, I think over the four, the last four years, they've you know, decidedly been the two best teams in the county. Uh, Clear Springs had some real good teams, but uh, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming more, of a, more and more of a charged atmosphere, you, too. You can, you can feel it. There's, uh, it's almost that north-south atmosphere. Not quite at that level yet, but, uh, but it's getting there. And, uh, you know, two really well-coached teams, two teams that, that just work hard, you know, and, and that sort of feel, or, or sort of is evident on the court, the teams that really want it and, and are always playing defense hard. And, you know, a lot of that's the coaching of, you know, both guys of uh, Kevin Hartman at North and uh, Ryan Grable at Williamsport have instilled in their teams consistently. Uh, so that's it, intensity is part of it on the floor, and then it's, it con conveys over to the stands too. And two teams I would imagine that we're going to be talking about and looking at uh, coming forward here as we look at playoff pairings coming out next week. Yeah. Yeah, North's in a really difficult uh, section, but they're going to be dangerous with what they've got. They've, they would have to play Ligonor uh, potentially or uh, Thomas Johnson, teams that they've lost to this year. But uh, I think they're dangerous right now. They've won five in a row. They're playing as good as they can play, and they're fairly healthy compared to what they've been, you know, previous uh, previous during the season. It hasn't been a smooth ride for them. They've had several injuries that they've overcome and has kind of taken away their depth. So I think they're ready to go. Williamsport's in a much easier section, uh, but 
then you know if they were to win their section title, they'd face a really tough game in the next, uh, you know, in the region final, which is expected because they play in a, in a very tough 2A West uh, region. So. Let's talk about some of the smaller schools now. We'll start with Clear Spring and uh, a, a milestone uh, point total for Mike Myers up there in Clear Spring, the leading scorer in uh, Washington County right now and uh, top the thousand point mark for his career this past week. Yeah, this was a big deal. Uh, you know, senior nights are sometimes very predictable and you get the same sort of thing and uh, they're kind of mundane almost, but this made it really special. Everybody was anticipating, you know, that he was going to make he was going to make the thousand points. He had a bunch of students that were holding signs up that counted off how many points he had. And uh, and that no that gym is so noisy uh, with the size of it, even even if the crowd isn't that big. But uh, it was it was really loud. And it was a great tribute to Myers, who's had a fantastic year considering he's doubled his scoring average from his first two years on the varsity. So. Uh, He's been great, and, and they were great that night. They won by 31 points against a team that they lost to earlier in the year. So it was a perfect night for them and shows how far they've come, and they're ready for, uh, for the playoffs now, I think. Yeah, 65-34 win over uh, Catoctin. And haven't had too many 1,000-point scorers up there at Clear Spring. They had another great game uh, uh, on Monday against Smithsburg, a game that came down to the wire, Smithsburg winning that one 56-55 uh, over Clear Spring, but this was really one to see. Yeah, Clear Spring led most of the way. Uh, they had beaten them earlier in the year in a really tough game that went overtime, uh, uh, but Smithsburg had a 16-0 run in the, uh, in the third quarter, and Bryce Keller was the star for Smithsburg. He hit a three at, at the end of the game. He also triggered the, uh, the run earlier in the game with a four-point play, a rare four-point play, and uh, you know, that must have been a good game, and that was, that was good to see for Smithsburg because they had lost five in a row uh, in games decided by three or fewer points. They had gone 0-4, so this was, this was kind of a getting over a big hump for them to win a close game, and to lose close games is kind of expected when you're a young team like they are. They got three sophomores in the starting lineup, and this is a big step for them. So we'll have more on the playoff pairings. Though. Those are due to come out next Tuesday. We'll talk about those on next week's show. So let's switch from uh, public schools to private real quick. And Broad Fording has, uh, has quite a streak going on, uh, going into the MDCC uh, tournament coming up here. Yeah, they're the overwhelming favorite. They've won every game in the league. Uh, now 35-game winning streak coming into the tournament. Uh, they've beaten everybody by at least 19 points, I believe it is, this year. So... It would take a monumental upset for them not to win the, win the league. Uh, it would be their third straight uh, title if they win it. And then quite an interesting game for St. Maria Greta coming up uh, uh, this week as well, Thursday night as we're uh, uh, airing this uh, against St. Stephen, St. Agnes. Yeah, they have a, a game that's kind of unusual on the schedule in, in, in that it's between the end of the regular season for their BCL uh, Baltimore Catholic League and the BCL tournament. Uh, it's with uh, the Saints of St. Saint, uh, Saint Stephen, St. Agnes, forgot their name for a minute. Uh, they're 22-3. and three. They won their, their league, and they're ranked number seven in the Washington Post. So they're a really quality opponent. They got a good big man, and uh, that's what you need to compete with Goretti because they got two really good big men. So. Yeah. All right. Well, Kevin, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. We'll have uh, Bob Parsoletti coming up next to talk Unified Sports. Stay with us. Frostburg's program at USMH was definitely closer to home, allowed me to stay at home while I had the opportunity to substitute in Washington County Public Schools. The scholarships at USMH really allowed me to walk out, being able to pay it off much more quickly and being able to pursue my graduate degree at a quicker rate. I would say to anyone considering USMH, allows you to build better relationships in the community and something that's definitely a great opportunity to pursue and leads to a better career. We've been coming to Rick's for about three or four years. The staff at Rick's is wonderful. It is the cheers of Hagerstown. Everybody knows your name. They've actually become a lot of our friends. They treat you like family. They know you by name. It's nice to be able to go somewhere as quality as this that's not a chain restaurant. The food is unique. They get fresh. creative. Yeah. It's fresh food. And they make great drinks. <laughs> the word is in. Local, casual, and always epic. That's Rick's Cafe. 
Welcome back to Inside Sports. Something a little bit different now. We're going to talk about unified sports and somebody who's a bit of an expert uh, on that for the Herald Mail, and that's Bob Parsoletti. Bob, you've covered a lot of the unified uh, sports events uh, over the last uh, 10 years now that, uh, that, that that's been uh, in, in existence here in Washington County. Tell us a little bit about what unified sports is and uh, what the bocce tournament was at HCC last week. Well, Unified Sports uh, was a movement that was started. Maryland's one of the pioneer states in it. And it's a movement to uh, include special needs children, the opportunity to compete in sports. I mean, a lot of us in my age range in the years when we were growing up, when you approached or saw a special needs kid, you decided, you know, you kind of shied away from them. You didn't really know how to uh, handle them. And uh, it, it's just the way, like a lot of things, it's, it, it's, a, it's a, scare ta a scare thing, you know, you don't know what to do. And this uh, movement or sport, these sports have made it so uh, the kids are included. They are now able to compete in a varsity sport, win a varsity letter, wear the school colors. Uh, you know, have that school pride, you know, get the, get the feeling of going out and competing and have people cheering for them. And, you know, to tell you about it, I mean, it's really something that everybody craves, you know, and this gives them the opportunity. Happens all three seasons here in, in Washington County in, uh, in the fall. Uh, they, they play unified tennis. In winter, it's uh, bocce ball. In the springtime, it's it's track and field. So, uh, as we mentioned, Bob, you covered the uh, the, the state bocce tournament uh, last week at Hagerstown Community College, and uh, in Boonesboro had two teams there, both uh, end up winning state titles in that. But it's really not so much about winning and losing with these teams, is it? Well, um, you know, it's it's a big deal to get to the state tournament. Uh, it's basically 32 teams make it. Uh, and they're broken up into four uh, 18 brackets. Uh, there's a scoring thing that divides them. I mean, the highest scoring eight teams are in the first bracket and, and so on. So there's a, a, a proficiency as opposed to classes, you know. Uh, and so Boonesboro had one team in the first division, one team in the second division. And then Smithsburg, which finished second, was uh, in the fourth division. So we had three teams from Washington County in it, and all three got top two, you know, or better in it. Uh, basically, the sport itself is uh, lawn bowling, and uh, that's what bocce is. But uh, for people that don't know what it is, it's kind of like uh, a horseshoes or jarts kind of thing where you have kind of a, an object that you're aiming at. In this case, it's a little golf ball. And you try to roll your, your ob or scoring balls to the closest to it. And the, the most, the team with the closest to it uh, from one to four balls, that's how many points they get. And they play to like 16 or a half hour, whichever comes first. So this, uh, and the beauty of this is that these kids, uh, these uh, special needs kids are called the athletes and the, uh, a, they're teamed with uh, regular athletes. I mean, there's football players and basketball players and all that playing with them and uh, they're, they, they compete together. So they're called unified partners, by the way. And um, it, it's just a thing that everybody gets excited about because watching how everybody reacts to it. The parents don't even get upset, which is the thing that amazes me. I, got, I go to regular basketball games and football games and parents want to hang, hang the coach for everything. It's not, a, not even a factor here. I, I was going to say, you, you, you say bocce or lawn bowling that doesn't sound like the most exciting game going uh, by any stretch but but I would imagine just the the kids who are involved and and the enthusiasm that they're showing is part of what makes it so exciting to well, I watch. guess I guess if you're going to talk about the excitement level it's probably like watching Olympic curling <laughs> in the Winter Olympics that thing where they slide the rock and it's kind of like shuffleboard people go nuts over that but it's the same kind of sport and the same kind of um, Excitement, you know, there's that uh, the one ki uh, one boy that played for Smithsburg. His name was Michael Douglas He says the beauty of this thing is it's competitive But it's not because there's as much luck as of all as skill He goes you play until the last ball and you don't know who's gonna win one of the things that uh, 
that our generation uh, kind of hears a lot is uh, with with the younger generation that you hear that how how bad participation trophies are and you know everybody gets a ribbon everybody gets a medal that kind of thing that's kind of something that's happening here but it's not a bad thing right not necessarily I mean you know these guy these kids go out there and I mean both Groups get it. The uh, the unified partners and and the athletes get the the ribbons and all that, but it's just the idea that uh, they get the feeling of being winners. I mean, you know, how many things do we do in life that you know pr are predicated on winning and losing? I mean, we do things every day that if we're successful, we consider ourselves a winner, and this gives every kid a chance to get that feeling, no matter what. You know, I mean, we had there was. Kids in wheelchairs playing in this, uh, you know, they and and they get as all excited about it as much as as anybody else. It's their chance. It's their moment in the sun, and it's kind of cool. It's something that uh, we sort of take for granted that that ability to compete. Uh, you know, we covered it for so many years in in the sports department, and and you know, the 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 so-called able-bodied uh, athletes, and and uh, you, you take that for granted. This is a chance to get those other kids uh, an opportunity. I really encourage you to uh, to look up some of Bob's coverage of unified sports uh, over the past few years uh, on heraldmailmedia.com. Bob does a great job covering that. Lots of heartwarming stories, so really encourage you to do that. Everybody should go out and just watch one of these. That's what it is. I think it, they'll realize what sports is supposed to be about again. You do that. Take Bob's uh, advice and go see one. Bob, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. We'll have our social media segment coming up right after this. A big disgrace, waving your banner all over the place. We will, we will rock you. Hey! Rock you. Bohemian Rhapsody. Digital customers, tune to Channel One to get started. For the last two years of my education, I was going to work full-time, school full-time, and raising two young children by myself. I think that anybody who's desiring to continue their education or to advance their career, I think that USMH provides convenient location, affordable pricing, and again, they have instructors that really care about sending their students off with the experience and the education that they need to succeed. Welcome back to Inside Sports. We're going to take a few moments here to check out social media and see what people have been talking about on Twitter recently in regards to local sports. The Boonesboro High School track and cross country programs at BHS Warriors CCTF tweeted this on Monday, boys 1A champs for the three-peat. It was close, but the Warriors did defend their state indoor track title for the second consecutive year holding off Lackey by four points in the team standings to complete yet another championship season for the Boonesboro running program. Our friend Braden Leather from Herald Mail Media at Leather Baseball got in on the act as well, retweeting Dan Kaufman at HM Sports Dan with this line, death, taxes, and Boonesboro winning cross country or track titles. It does almost seem like a sure thing for the Warriors at this point. You'll want to check out Dan's coverage of the two days of the indoor state track meet champ track championships at www.heraldmailmedia.com with stories, lots of photos, and complete local results. And Dan will be here with us next week on Inside Sports to give us the rundown, so you have another reason now to come back. Smithsburg Baseball at SHS underscore baseball retweeted Texas Christian University Baseball at TCU underscore baseball as they celebrated one of their own with the message, another milestone for number 22 at TCU Schloss. Congratulations, Coach. TCU's head coach is Jim Schlossnagel, a Smithsburg graduate who registered his 650th win at TCU on Sunday. Schlossnagel has turned the Horned Frogs into a national powerhouse since his arrival in 2004. They've appeared in the NCAA tournament 13 times in the last 15 seasons and advanced to the College World Series five times. He also won 77 games in two seasons at UNLV before he took the job at TCU so he's very quickly closing in on 750 career victories. Congratulations indeed to Jim Schlossnagel on that milestone and the continuation of an incredible career. 
Hit us up on social media with your pictures or videos on Twitter. We are at Inside Sports OL. On Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, it's at Inside Sports Now. We could include your social media post in this segment next week. That does it for us this week. Thanks to our Herald Mail insiders, Andy Mason, Kevin Dunleavy, and Bob Parcelletti for joining us in the studio. And our thanks again to you for tuning in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next week on The Inside. Hey, sisters and your brothers. Hey, haters and your lovers.